Let's build a custom pagination inside Webflow using our own design, just by implementing an attribute by FinSuite and a few simple steps. So let's begin. So building a custom pagination might sound advanced because, and most of, as most of you know, Webflow does not offer this um, function natively. So we do have to resort to some custom solutions, but I promise you right now it's going to take a few steps and it's going to be easy peasy. So the first thing we need to do is go to the CMS load attribute by FinSuite and go ahead and do the step one, which is copying the script into our head page. So because we will only be using this on one page, which is our resources. We will simply go to the page settings here and go ahead and paste the script into the head here. As you can see, I already have some CMS nest and filters also by FinSuite. They are an amazing company doing the God work for us web flowers. Um, so that's step one. Let's go for a step two. So let's see, required, required for minimum setup, we need to, of course, set the attribute to the list that we want to paginate. So let's do that. We want to paginate this resources list. And all we have to do here is go to the custom attributes, attributes copy paste this FS CMS load element, and then type in list. Let's check back. Yeah, it's the list. Now that's done. And next thing we need to make sure to include this as well. So we go to the same list here, add another attribute and type in pagination. Now let's read what it says. So this is an important thing here. It's required for us to enable the native pagination inside Webflow. So this is something we will do right now. All you have to do is go to the, either to the list or on the wrapper and click on paginate items here. So let's click that. Now regarding the items per page, um, let's go with nine. So yeah, that works perfectly. Now this is just something that I've done for the filtering, which will not be visible on the, on the publish page. So let's go ahead and give this a class. Now this will be pagination wrapper, or we can simply call it pagination. It doesn't really matter. Now what matters is we need to give it some top margin here. So let's go with something like three rem. I think that will be good enough. And then let's check the next steps. So now we handled everything required for minimum setup. Now the next thing we need to do is scroll here to the advanced pagination features. Now we need to um, do this, which is the page button. Now let's copy paste this right away. Now, as you can see, we need to create um, Let's see if it says something here. Yeah, so about the current active state, we will do that uh, together. But what we need to do is create a separate link block here. So let's add a link block. We'll call this pagination number. And while we're here, we can hide the previous button and the next button because we will be using the numbers here. So pagination number, we can style it directly here. So let's give it a width of around three rem. We'll see if that's okay. I think that's actually perfect. So we'll give it some radius like 0.25 rem here. And then what we will do is simply add a text block inside. Let me just remove this default styling here. And all we have to do is just type one. 
Now let's give this a flex so we can center this item inside. And this is pretty much it with an exception that we need to create a styling for a current, um, current pagination. So how we can do that? Now, if we go back here, um, you will see that the current active state is managed by Webflow's current state styling. What that means is that we can simply link this to the current page resources and we will get this green current styling panel here. Now, all we have to do is style this just to make sure that it's a little bit different from a, from a default pagination. Um, let's give it, um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We'll do something like, I think something like this patrol that we have here and then color text color, we can change to white. I think that's pretty good actually. And if we want this to be smooth, uh, we can also do something else. We can go ahead and select the pagination numbers class here and go ahead to the transitions and go to the background color, change it to, let's say 300 MS and then add another one, which is for the font color, also 300 MS. Now this will make sure that when we click on the pagination, there is this smooth transition of colors. Now, of course, what we can also do is create an hover effect for this. So it all looks great it, as a final result. Now for this, we can simply add um, something like this, like nothing that um, that stands out a lot. I think this is perfect, actually. So this is for the styling. Now let's actually add the attribute to this element. So we copy paste this, go back here into the custom attributes. And then for the value, we copy paste this, which is the page button. Perfect. Now uh, let's see something else. Yep. We have the page dots, which are these here. Now I actually want to create the custom ones because I think that the uh, default ones are just not aligned with what I had in my mind. But before we do that, we actually want to apply this. Um, actually, it's already applied as flex. But what we can do is make sure it's horizontal direction. And then we can also make sure that it's completely centered. Now here, we'll add just a text block, which will be just three dots like here. And one last thing we need to do is add some gap. So we'll add something like one ram of gap. Let's see. I think that's good. And now all we have to do is select this text block, go ahead into the custom attributes and then add this page dots value. Now I think that's it. Let's publish and test this out. If we did everything um, properly, this should work as it is. So let's go here. Yeah, it's currently uh, like processing. I don't know why it works like this, but as you can see, slowly but surely our custom pagination works. So let's see, I think that's actually it. So if we go to the third one here, as you can see, it works. It works perfectly.